get the general rundown. As always, if you plan on playing the game or watching a walkthrough for the game, um, don't watch because there's going to be spoilers. But if you're still interested, let's begin. Seventeen years have passed since the events of the first game, and the baby who the incubator gave to Harry Mason at the end of the first game, Heather Mason, is now a teenage girl. Henry took Heather into his care and raised her as his own daughter. While running an errand for her father at the Central Square Shopping Center, Heather falls asleep inside of a fast food restaurant and dreams about Silent Hill, where she finds herself wandering through a nightmarish amusement park. After fighting her way past several monsters, Heather walks along the roller coaster tracks until she is struck down by a roller coaster. After the roller coaster incident, her nightmare, Heather wakes up in the mall. She calls her father and lets him know that she is on her way home. Just as she is leaving, however, Heather encounters a detective named Douglas Cartland, who was hired by a cult known as the Order to find her. Heather, thinking him a stalker, hides in a restroom. She jumps out of a window, but her way out is blocked on both ends, forcing her to find another way through the mall. Inside the mall, Heather realizes there are strange monsters lurking around in a clothing store. Heather finds a handgun to defend herself with. As Heather wanders through the mall, she encounters a barefoot woman dressed in all black, with flowing blonde hair. She is the high priestess of the order, Claudia Wolf, who has been searching for Heather, or rather, Alessa Gillespie, for a long time. Claudia tells Heather that her talents are required, and to remember me, and your true self as well and that she will learn, lead them to paradise with the blood-stained hands. Heather then comes down with a serious migraine as Claudia leaves. When Heather enters an elevator, it descends, causing a radio to drop from the ceiling, which emits a static whenever monsters are nearby. The elevator door opens, revealing a second, more sinister-looking elevator that indicates crossing over into another reality. After writing the second elevator down, Heather finds herself inside the other world, a nightmarish version of the mall. Even though she is frightened, she manages to make it back to the real world. After a battle with an enormous monster in the mall, once everything is back to normal, or at least seems to be, Heather heads for the subway so that she may return home. However, Douglas stops her. Heather assumes that he, that the private investigator is on Claudia's side, but he tells her that he was only hired to find her. Heather leaves the bewildered man alone and enters the subway. As the mall is deserted, with the exception of old monsters here and there, Heather even has a close call when she narrowly avoids being run over by a subway car. She takes the aforementioned subway to the underpass and fights her way through the sewer-like sewer corridors until she reaches a construction site, which she uses to reach another building of the hilltop center that is adjacent to the construction site, though an open window it is on the, the inside of Hilltop Center while inspecting a bathtub, and her enter, or Heather enters the nightmare world once again. Heather encounters a man named Victor Smith. Boy, the police are active today. Heather encounters a, named, named, a man named Vincent Smith, who is also a priest of the order, but who has different views on where the cult should go. After a brief conversation, she abandons him as well voicing her beliefs that there is something wrong with him. When Heather reaches the exit, she finds a monster called the Gluten, blocking it. She finds scattered pages of a fairy tale which contains the words to 
Foy Eco Eris, which makes the monster disappear after getting rid of the monster. Heather is brought back to normal world by the Hilltop Center. Upon arrival at her home in... I'm sorry about the interruption again. Uh, where was I? After getting rid of the monster, Heather is brought back to the normal world and escapes the Hilltop Center. Upon arriving at her home in Daisy Villa Apartments, Heather discovers the body of her father, Harry Mason, slumped in a chair. Having been brutally murdered, Heather is shocked and speechless at her father being taken away from her so suddenly. Rests on her father's lap and sobs heavily. Once again, she regains control of her emotions. Heather follows the blood trails to the rooftop apartment where Claudia is waiting for her. Her motive for murdering uh, Harry's murder is that he thwarted, he thwarted the cult's plan 17 years ago and that killing him would fulfill her heart of hatred. Claudia tells Heather that she hasn't the one, she wasn't the one that killed him, only that she gave the order to her companions, a monster known as the Missionary. Uh, Claudia then tells Heather that she will be waiting for her in Silent Hill and leaves the apartment. After killing the monster, Heather finds Douglas inside the apartment. He helps remove Harry's body into his room, covered by a sheet. Harry pays her final, or Heather pays her final respects to her father and decides to find Claudia and kill her in revenge. Despite the fact that Douglas tells her revenge isn't the answer, Douglas offers to drive her to Silent Hill, which she reluctantly agrees to. Outside the apartment, Duther, Douglas hands Heather a map of Silent Hill, a gift from Vincent, and tells her that Vincent says to look for a man named Leonard Wolf. He also explain, he also gives her a notebook from her father, which acts as an explanation of Heather's past and the final goodbye to her. Heather and Douglas arrive in Silent Hill the following day. The town itself is deserted and covered by a fog. They set up refuge in Jackson's Inn and then split up. Heather heads for Brookhaven Hospital while Douglas goes in search of Leonard Wolf's house. Heather searches the hospital for clues to Claudia's location. Instead, among other things, Heather finds demonic nurses, some of which are armed with revolvers. She also finds one of the hospital's patients, Stanley Coleman, has an unhealthy obsession with her, and that Leonard is imprisoned within the hospital. Heather realizes a startling discovery about her herself long forgotten. She is a reincarnation of Alessa Gillespie. As she has memorized Alessa's life previous to the fire, she was burning in at the age of 17. Heather enters the nightmare realm once again, and it is there that she encounters Leonard Wolf, who reveals himself to be the father of Claudia. Unfortunately, Leonard has degenerated into a monster and attacks Heather, who defeats him. Heather acquires the seal of Metatron, a talisman which Leonard possessed. At the, uh, and the hospital becomes normal once again, upon Lee Leonard's demise. Heather returns to the Jackson Inn to meet with Douglas. However, before she can return, Claudia and Vincent have a conversation about the cult, as well as Leonard's abusive, uh, abusiveness towards Claudia in their motel room. Vincent is waiting for Heather when she returns to the Jackson Inn, Claudia already having left. Heather asks him about Douglas' location, and Vincent tells her that he left a message. The church is on the other side of the lake. He also tells Heather that Claudia is inside the church, and that she must pass through Lakeside Amusement Park in order to reach her. 
and then follows Vincent's advice only to find that she has arrived at the park. She enters the nightmare world once again. Heather follows the path to the roller coaster, but only this time around with the foreknowledge of what is going to occur, she manages to jump, to jump off the tracks just before the car can run her over. In another part of the park, Claudia and Douglas are arguing. Douglas feels bad, uh, feels betraying by Claudia and says, while Claudia is, is saying that, while Claudia says Heather was kidnapped and brainwashed, he feels that Heather is actually happy. Claudia then explains that they need Heather back into the cult because God needs to be born to usher in a new paradise. An ethereal world filled with no pain, hunger, sickness, old age, greed, or war. Douglas then points out that a place without any worries or negative implications is not really a paradise, but rather a stagnant world where nothing happens of any real value. Douglas sighs and then saying that type of world would be pointless and boring, and in response Claudia tells Douglas she pities him. Douglas then pulls out a gun and points it at her, and, after, and what happens afterwards remains a mystery. After exploring the amusement park, Heather eventually runs into Douglas once again. However, he is unable to come with her due to his broken leg, which is implied to have been intentionally broken by Claudia using the power of psychokinesis. Douglas reveals that his son was shot robbing a bank and talks more about his life. Heather promises to come back when she's done with things, and she comes to find herself in the same area of the amusement park where Henry was 17 years ago. On the carousel, Heather encounters a doppelganger, the memory of Alessa. The other Heather is bloodied and severely burned and, is, and wishes to stop the birth of God at all costs. After defeating herself, her dark self, Heather reaches the entrance of the cult church. Heather encounters Claudia inside the chapel and tells Alessa that uh, tells her that Alessa is fine with the way it is. It is unknown if this was uh, actually Alessa or just Heather pretending to be her as of the way to manipulate Claudia. Claudia has a strong will and explains that there is too much suffering in the world and God, the God of her cult, will change that. Although Heather explains that suffering is a fact of life and that Claudia must face the reality and not hurt anyone, Heather also tells Claudia that she will never forgive her for killing Harry. Heather suddenly feels pain as the God is close to being ready for birth. Claudia leaves. While fighting her way through the corridors of the church, Heather encounters Vincent inside the library. He asks her about the seal of Metatron, which Heather has in her possession. Vincent is revealed as he believes, relieved as he believes it can be used as a weapon to defeat Claudia, whom Heather finally catches up to inside the cult's inner sanctum. Claudia wounds Vincent by stabbing him from behind, and Heather is somewhat taken aback by this action. After Claudia calms down, she resumes her usual composure and thanks Heather for making God feel hate and become closer to paradise. Heather then points out that God, a God who believes in hate, can never create a perfect world. Claudia retaliates by saying that even a joyful world can be a cruel place, and that in order to understand sympathy, one must understand pain and suffering. Vincent is still alive and desperately tells Claudia that Heather has the seal of Metatron. Claudia then reveals that the seal of Metatron is nothing but useless trinket before stabbing Vincent in the heart, resulting in his death. Heather nearly succumbs to the rage after calling Claudia a bitch. Wow, that's rude. But finally regains control of herself. The pendant Heather wears around her neck as a birthday gift from her father. Inside contains a small capsule of alcophothus, a liquid known to exercise.
exorcise demons. Heather swallows it and vomits the bloody fetus of God onto the floor. Okay, that's gross. Uh, after taunting Claudio with looks like God didn't make it, Heather attempts to stomp on it with her boot, but Claudia shoves her aside and picks up the creature. After ingesting God herself, Claudia falls through a hole in the floor and Heather jumps after her. Inside the chamber, Claudia is dead after giving birth to a monstrous god. Heather then discovers that the god, which resembles a repulsive skeletal-like body with a reptilian female face, which resembles Les's own face, and a shrouded a shroud provided by Vitelli, due to Claudia... God has been reborn. Hither kills God, thus finally avenging her father. Hither then collapses to the floor and mourns over her father's death after regaining composure. Hither stands up and begins to leave, but turns around and stares back at God's, uh, at God's direction. It is unknown. It is unknown what occurs before the end. Uh, before the ending. three different endings which you can get in this game and um there's you know visiting or, or heather visiting cheryl's grave uh there's the douglas murder where i guess she kills douglas and then there's the kookiest ending which is i guess the ufo ending uh, i never got the ufo ending but i would say that it was pretty interesting and i had a really good time playing this game when I did. I did forget about the vomiting the fetus part. I'll, I'll say that. But 